Здравствуйте! Всем привет! Ну что ж, давайте поговорим о том, что мы с вами сделали в прошлый раз. Let's talk about what we did last time. We went through where do you live, what do you do, where are you from, кто вы по профессии, all of that good stuff. Took quite a bit of new vocabulary. And to reinforce all of that, we will listen to a dialogue. Before we do that, let me tell you what we're gonna do today. Today we will deal with quite a bit of grammar, actually. How exciting! We'll deal with prepositional case. That's what we use for location. Things like в Москве, в школе, in school, in Moscow, things of that nature, and also some direct object, so-called accusative case. That's when you study Russian, for example. Russian is the direct object of your studying it, or you read a book. The book is the direct object. Accusative case, you have to change feminine endings from a to u, ya to you, so you end up with ya chitayu knigu rather than kniga, and things of that nature. So you will see some new grammar, well, kind of new, you've done things of that nature before last year, and also you will see some new vocabulary. Хорошо, there will be another saying, of course, some more culture, and uh, to get it started, go ahead and listen to the dialogue that deals with nationality and where do you live first. Here it is. Um, Michelle, а кто вы по национальности? Вы американка? Да, я американка. И вы? А, вы? а вы, а я русская. Да. Я по национальности русская. Хорошо. А вы, Линда? Я американка. И ваши родители американцы? И ваша бабушка и дедушка um, американцы? Нет, um, моя бабушка полька. А, полька. Mm -hmm. ah. um, а моя дедушка. Дедушка. А, oh, очень интересно. У вас в семье немцы, поляки и американцы. Очень интересно. А где вы живете, Мишел? Um, Вы живете в Далласе? Да, я живу в Далласе. А ваша семья тоже живет в Далласе? Нет, нет, моя сестра живет в Чикаго, и моя брат живет в Атланте. Ваш брат живет в Атланте? Да. А, да. А понятно. Где? А я живу в Далласе, и мой муж, и мой сын тоже живут в Далласе, но моя мама... И мой брат, и моя сестра живут в России, в Москве. А -а -а. Я из России. Я сама из России, из Москвы. Хорошо. Хорошо. А, Линда, а вы живете где? А, я живу в Далласе. Вы Далас. жив, тоже живете в Далласе, Далас. как и Мишель. Да. Да. А ваша семья тоже живет с вами в Далласе? Да. А, моя сестра... Ваша сестра oh. не живет с вами. Um, uh, а где живет ваша сестра? А где живет ваша сестра? А, вот это А, да. Моя сестра живет в форт А, ваша сестра живет, но она тоже в Техасе. Да. А, понятно, понятно. Но это недалеко. Having answered the questions such as кто вы по национальности, где вы живете, we can now go on and review кто вы по профессии, где вы работаете, what do you do, where do you work. We're going to look at the next dialogue, the one that you saw at the beginning, actually at the end of last lesson. Having looked at it, we'll go through it in detail and talk about some other things. Here's the dialogue. Мишель, ну, можно вас спросить? Да, пожалуйста. Мишель, а кто вы по профессии? Я учительница. О, а что вы преподаете? А, я преподаю а, театр. Театр? Театр, а. да. А, русский, русский язык, английский. А. А, литературу. И литературу тоже. Да, да. А где вы работаете? А, я работаю в школе. В школе? 
А, а кто вы? А, я тоже учительница. Я тоже преподаю русский, да. но я не работаю в школе. Я работаю на телевидении. Очень хорошо. А, Линда, а кто вы по профессии? А, я библиотекар. А, а где вы работаете? Да, а, я работаю в библиотеке. В библиотеке? Да. А где эта библиотека? В школе? Да, в школе. В школе. Очень приятно, очень интересно. Хорошо. Я думаю, что мы можем с вами назвать этот диалог меньшее зло. I think we can call this dialogue the lesser evil, considering that it's quite a bit shorter and actually quite a bit easier than где вы живете, кто вы по национальности диалог. Let's go ahead and take this one apart, look at it in detail. Можно вас спросить? Можно, is it possible? May I? Uh, when you want something, it's enough to simply say можно? Is it okay? May I? Можно вас спросить? May I ask you something? Да, пожалуйста. Yes, please. It's kind of like, yeah, go ahead. Да, пожалуйста. Три, четыре. Да, пожалуйста. And next. Кто вы по профессии? Literally, who you by profession? Это значит, what that means is, what do you do? Кто вы по профессии? Три, четыре. Кто вы по профессии? И ответ, and the answer is, я учительница. Я учительница. I'm a teacher. It's a woman saying it, so she's using a feminine form of it. Хорошо. Next question and answer are, а что вы преподаете? And what do you teach? Преподаете goes with вы and means teach. So, what do you teach? And the answer, я преподаю театр, русский, meaning русский язык, и литературу. Let's start at the end. Литературу, literature, литература became литературу once you started teaching it or studying it. It's a direct object, change R to U. Ruski doesn't change, doesn't have an R there at the end, and neither does teatr. And uh, at the beginning of that sentence, we've got я преподаю, I teach. So я преподаю, вы преподаете. As you probably remember, verbs, the forms of the verbs depend on the person, the pronoun, or the noun that they go with. Очень хорошо. The next question and answer, and then another question go like that. А где вы работаете? And where do you work? Работаете. Вы работаете. Три, четыре. А где вы работаете? And the answer, я работаю в школе. I work in school. I work at a school. Хорошо, so школа, turning into a location from just a noun, has to have that а replaced with a е. Yeah. So в школе, at school. А кто вы? And who are you? Meaning, кто вы по профессии? What do you do? And she answers, я тоже учительница. Учительница, три, четыре. Учительница. Учительница. Я тоже учительница. I'm also a teacher. Я тоже преподаю русский, or русский язык. I also teach Russian. And more, she also says, но я работаю не в школе, а на телевидении. A bunch of is there in the way it sounds. So, Телевидении. Television. На телевидении. On television. At a TV studio or something like that. So she says, Я работаю не в школе. I work not in school, а на телевидении. But on TV. At a TV studio. Remember when you say not A but B, you always use these two. Ни blank А. Blank. Хорошо? The whole phrase once again. Не на телевидении, 
не в школе, etc. Хорошо. Let's go to the next one. А кто вы по профессии? What do you do? Who are you by profession? Хорошо. Я библиотекарь. Bibli, kind of like Bible, Biblio, must be something with books. Библиотека, library, библиотекарь, library in. So, я библиотекарь. I'm a librarian. Очень хорошо. And the next question there is, а где вы работаете? And where do you work? Well, like, uh, I guess, библиотеки. Я работаю в библиотеке. I work in a library. Didn't come as a surprise, did it? And then finally, next question. А где эта библиотека? And where is that library? В школе? At a school? Да, в школе. Yes, at a school. And the conclusion to it is очень интересно. That's very interesting. Хорошо. Well, that's all of it. This dialogue definitely wasn't too bad, and there isn't that much new material in there. However, we're going to expand on it. And since the subject of school was brought up, we will uh, kind of beat it into the ground here. Here's what we're going to do. When you study in high school, there are certain terms you use for teacher or student. And uh, when you study in college, there are some other terms you use. We'll look through that. We'll look through some of the ways you say, I study something, and also she teaches, he teaches, etc. Хорошо. So, when you study in high school, which is в школе. В школе. Take a look at it at the bottom right there. В школе. In school. Meaning high school. You are going to be called either школьник, if you're a guy, or школьница if you are a girl. So, школьник, школьница, школа being school, this kind of sounds like a schoolnik, right? And a female schoolnik. If that helps you remember, that's great. Хорошо. Or maybe you could be called ученик or ученица. Хорошо. And the teacher in a школа is going to be учитель. Хорошо. If it's a guy or учительница. If it's a girl, once again, учитель. Учить, to teach. So, учитель, teacher. Учительница, female teacher. Хорошо. Later on, you could be studying at a college. And uh, that would be в институте. If it's kind of a small college, more focused. If it's a big place, it's going to be в университете. Okay? That's another possibility right there. В университете. Очень хорошо. That's where you're going to be called either student, if you're a guy, or студентка. Хорошо. Usually the terms student and студентка are not used for high school. Хорошо. The teacher at a university is called something really long and ugly. So, university instructor, college instructor is a преподаватель. Let's take it from the end with a til. Then, ватель, даватель, подаватель, преподаватель. Say it once again. Преподаватель with me. Преподаватель, преподаватель. Хорошо. This looks pretty long. However, if it's a female university, oh, that is pretty long. If it's a female university instructor, it's going to be Преподавательница. Try that just for grins. Преподавательница. Три, четыре. Преподавательница. Okay. Why is this useful to us? Well, a part of that преподавательница is a преподавать. That is to teach. And that's what we use both for high school or university. Хорошо. Let's take a look at that преподавать verb in high school or college the teacher teaches with this verb преподавать and the way it conjugates is я преподаю 3-4 я преподаю ты преподаешь ты преподаешь он или она преподает мы 
преподаем. We teach, right? Вы преподаете. You teach, они преподают. They teach. Очень хорошо. All right. Now, what one teaches is going to be a direct object. We're going to put it in so-called accusative case. That means watch out for the as and us at the, as and yas at the end of those nouns. For example, if you study физика, physics or something like that, turn it into физику. Хорошо. If it's something like Russian, however, you don't have to change much. Русский will just stay there. So I teach Russian. Я преподаю русский. Direct object, no as to change to us. Keep the русский exactly the way it is. Хорошо? But if it's physics, then you will have физика turning into физику. Хорошо? А become зум. So она преподает физику. Очень хорошо. And also, in high school or college, a student is going to study a particular subject with the verb изучать. Take a look at that whole bunch there. Я изучаю, I study plus a direct object. Like, I study Russian. Я изучаю русский язык, 3-4. Я изучаю русский язык. You study. Ты изучаешь. As in, what do you study? Что ты изучаешь? Хорошо? Он, она изучает. Мы изучаем. We study. Like, we study English. Мы изучаем английский. 3-4. Мы изучаем английский. Вы изучаете. You study. Они изучают. They study. Очень хорошо. So, once again, what one studies is a direct object, just like with teaching. If there is an I at the end of the noun, turn it to U. Я, turn it to you. Leave everything exactly the same way. So, if you study Russian, you will have Я изучаю русский язык. Хорошо? Take a look at it. Я изучаю русский. I study Russian. Хорошо? If it's a noun that has an I in it, like физика, you'll have я изучаю физику, I turn to у. Хорошо. All right, let's take a look at a whole list of subjects that you could be studying in high school. Английский. Right there at the heading, we've got мы изучаем, we study. And then direct objects. Мы изучаем английский, we study English. Мы изучаем математику, we study math, mathematics. Да? So, here, notice that there is an other turn to U. Математика became математику. Okay, we study history. Мы изучаем историю, literature, литературу, and chemistry, химию. Uh, by the way, computer science is going to be something like вычислительная uh, техника, but we won't go there. Хорошо. So, that was just a little grammar. Let's go ahead and try to break up the monotony of talking about school and grammar and things of that nature with some more of gestures and just the way Russians function as far as dealing with people, not necessarily speaking, but just how they gesture, what they do. Etc. Хорошо. If you want to say that you don't know something, this works, right? Works beautifully in Russian too. Я не знаю. Я не знаю. Хорошо. Okay. Another way to do it would be just Я не знаю. So shake your head. Я не знаю. Хорошо. Another fra uh, another thing that you don't see much in American culture is this. <sighs> kind of moving your head a little bit, sort of scratching your neck, that also probably means I don't know, I'm not really sure. Okay? Try not to make a kind of silly face when you do that, otherwise it kind of looks a little bit uh, demented maybe. Хорошо. Okay. And of course the saying of the lesson is coming right at you, right here. It is ломать не делать. So, ломать не делать. To break is not to make. That's something that you will probably remember when you do travel to Russia. The idea of socialism in Russia has created a whole different culture. 
since the state used to own most of the stuff, so to say, you know, buildings, machinery, it doesn't really belong to you. You know, there is a public phone, does it belong to you? Well, no. So, do you care if it's broken? No. Do you care if somebody breaks it? Not really. So, there's an awful lot of vandalism in Russia. Uh, quite a bit of graffiti and stuff like that. And basically that refers to that particular phrase, as far as I'm concerned. It's the ломать не делать. To break something is not to make it quite a bit easier. That's the idea. Хорошо. Okay. So, in this lesson we have done quite a bit of new things. We have reviewed some grammar. We have looked at prepositional case. В школе, in school. В библиотеке, at the library. На телевидении и, at the television, etc. By the way, the difference between в and then prepositional case for the location and на plus prepositional and location. Do you remember anything about that? It doesn't really have anything to do with at or on or in. Go ahead and simply remember that you can use this thing as a clue. If you're dealing with sort of a 3D object, like a building or something like that, school, university, uh, library, you will probably be using v. Okay, so in school, в школе. Okay, at the university. В университете. I'm using v to say at, in, same thing. Okay, at the library. В библиотеке. Okay, if it's more of an open place, you're gonna be using на. Хорошо? Something like, uh, you may remember площадь, square. If you don't, don't worry, we're simply reviewing the point, not the vocabulary. So, on the square, flat space, no buildings that you're getting into, you're gonna use на, на площади. Хорошо? Uh, or, for example, if you are at a lesson in class, is class a building? Well, kind of, but the actual class, the lecture is an activity. So for that you're gonna say на. Class is урок, then in class is на уроке. На уроке. Хорошо. So use в for 3D objects, buildings and such, countries, something with borders. No one use на for flat surfaces, на столе, on the table, on the desk. Хорошо. На лекции, at a lecture, that's an activity, not a building. Хорошо? Окей. Of course, there are some crazies that will throw you off and you won't really know every time which to use. Хорошо? Those are the, exactly the same ones that you should be using to say that you're going there as well. If you're going to school, the destination, the place you're going to, is going to be in accusative case, like a direct object. Start out with школа, and you'll go to school, в школу. Хорошо? Just like we did with I study физика. Я изучаю физику. I go to school, я иду в школу. The reason why I'm bringing that up is that it's the same в that we use. So, в школу, to school. But if you're going to a class, урок, you're not gonna say в урок. You're not getting into the class. It's not something to get in. It's на. Okay? So you'd say на урок. Хорошо? Спасибо. Так, кроме того, что еще мы с вами сделали? Много поработали с винительным падежом. We worked a lot with accusative case. Studying a subject, putting it in a direct object form. Я изучаю химию, математику, литературу, a bunch of us and yous, if there are us and yes to begin with. Okay? Хорошо. Let's go ahead and talk about your homework now. You need to write out five more pages of the endless handout that is rapidly coming to an end. Pages 26 through 30. Do them exactly the same way again, only write on the left-hand side where you have the text. 
go ahead and write it out exactly the way they ask you to. What you see is what you should write there. Хорошо? And leave the right hand side for me to deal with what you wrote there on the left so that I could put some corrections on the right hand side. Give it back to you. And then have you turn it back to me. Correct it. Хорошо? That's what you need to do. One more thing that you needed to take care of is the vocabulary. Go ahead and look through the vocab sheet that you got for this lesson. But also take a look at all of your previous vocab sheets for lessons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and the 6th lesson. We are going to have a little bit of a review quiz that will let you and me know whether the review that we have gone through using the dialogues and things of that nature worked well. Okay, so review the vocabulary and also go ahead and do some work with the dialogues. Not only the dialogue that you heard in this lesson, this thing with where do you work, what do you do, try to reenact this one and also some of the others. I think that's one of the best things you can do in class. Go ahead and break up into groups of two, three students or something like that and uh, try to go into где вы работаете, where do you work? Я не работаю, I don't work. Я изучаю русский язык, I study Russian. Just something that will actually be applicable to you personally. Хорошо? Or things like откуда вы? Where are you from? Я из Техаса. Я американец. I'm American. I'm from Texas. Хорошо? So, deal with the things that are useful to you, but don't forget about the quiz. Don't forget about vocabulary and those quick grammar points. I wish you the best of luck reviewing, and I will see you later. До свидания.